Hello fellow Leggers, thank you for joining us once again. Um, we are outside braving the elements because we are at the Kilworth House Theatre which is an outdoor venue. Yeah, and one might say we're braving cats and dogs or perhaps just cats because we are here to see the Andrew Lloyd Webber classic musical Cats! cats. <laughs> so stick around to hear all of our thoughts. Find out how many stars. Whether it's break a leg or a leg it. <laughs> Once before we came to see um, Guys and Dolls well last done, year, well the remember, musical. Like, the Philodex of things that we've seen, it <laughs> was we Guys really and Dolls. We really enjoyed it. We did, We absolutely. loved specifically the choreography, which yeah. is kind of one of the reasons we're back again. Absolutely, because the choreographer and director for Cats here at Kilworth is the wonderful Nick Winston. Um, yep. Nick did Guys and Dolls, he also did Rock of Ages and Club Tropicana. He's done and some the great highlight stuff. of all of those shows is his choreography. Yep. It's been radically reimagined, but let's get on to that after I tell you a little bit about Cats if you don't know about cats. Okay. I mean, everyone's a cat. Are you a cat person or a dog person? Let us know down below. But anyway, Controversial. it's a Topical. sung through musical composed by Andrew Lloyd Webber and based on the 1939 poetry book, Old Possum's Book of Practical Cats by T.S. Eliot. Okay. Now, it tells the story of a... I mean, strapping guys, because this is story. A, this story. There's a story in it there. It tells the story of a tribe of cats called the Jellicles and the night of the Jellicle choice, which decides which cat will ascend to the heavy side layer, presumably their version of Nirvana, and come back to a new life. Basically, okay. it's a reaping ceremony for a weird, bizarre cat. It does sound like a cat cult. When you start to look into it, it's really weird. It's isn't an it? they, acid trip all, they, of a show, guys. They're all saying, choose me, choose me. I want to die. Yeah. I want to die. Take no, me. me. Take me. It's, it's an it's audition. A bit, it's a bit horror be, It's an audition to be killed. To be sacrificed. Yeah. To be, anyway. I mean, let's try and get over that. I, now, from my experience of it, it's yeah. all about the talent of the cast, the dancing and the singing. Well, I want to give you a bit More of a, over the story. a factoid. We'll come on to the cast. But a when factoid. pitching for investment, Andrew Lloyd Webber found it really difficult to secure the funds based on the premise. I wonder why. But And the way it challenged traditional musical theatre storytelling. But he went on to prove those people wrong and Cats went on to become one of the largest grossing and longest running musicals of all time, grossing billions of pounds. I tell you, who's laughing Billions now? Billions of pounds. Now, the original West End production opened in 1981 at the New London Theatre, running for 21 years, produced by Cameron McIntosh, directed by Sir Trevor Nunn, and choreographed by the late, great Gillian Lynn, whose choreography itself went on to become legendary in its own right. This production, however, has been directed and choreographed by Nick Winston and is sort of a retelling of the story, placing the action in a London underground station come bomb shelter at the heights of the World War II Blitz in 1939, which is when the original story was written. Okay, I see what they're Genius. doing here. Okay. Now, Nick has assembled a fantastic cast for this, as including does. Emma Hatton as, as Grizabella. She's a former star of Wicked in the West End. Brilliant. Jeremy Seacombe is playing Old Deuteronomy, and Jeremy's no stranger to the works of Andrew Lloyd Webber, having filmed, um, been part of the ensemble in the film 25th anniversary production of Phantom of the Opera. Okay. He's also appearing in the West End in Les Mis. Okay. And Oliver Ormson, the wonderful, Ollie's our friend Ollie. Hello, Ollie. Um, he's taking on the role of from Tum Tugga. We saw him in yeah. pantomime at the Wolverhampton Grand Sleeping Beauty and we've got an interview with him. He's a just lovely guy. Up there. Yep. I mean, it's Andrew Lloyd Webber, so it's going to be two hours and something, including the <laughs> interval, isn't it? Because that's what they all are, right? I'm looking forward to seeing all the choreography, seeing this new imagining of it, because, like I say, it's not been done yeah. in a new way. A lot of things can become quite tiring. You've seen them over and over again, surely. It's nice to see a fresh new take with fresh new blurred. So stick around for our 30 second interval. And to the end, here are thoughts and find out how many stars. It is the interval, Leggers. There was a bit of an awkward moment where the audience wasn't yeah, sure. Yeah, was the interval ever going to come? Is, is no it one the interval? quite knew. A lot, a lot of stillness, but it is here, which means it is time for the break, Leggers. 30, 30 second, second interval breakdown. Go. What, what do you think, think so far? I'm thinking there's a lot of wasps around because we're outdoors. There's one just flew past, Star Cameo. I am absolutely loving it. The choreography is stunning. I am breathtaking by the ability of this cast. The music is soaring. The lyrics are questionable, but I'm having a good time. What about you? Um, I think it's an absolute showcase for the cast, the choreography um, to match. There is no story. We know this already, but it's nice to see it done in a different way. I'm loving the 1939 feel to the set and the choreography. It's Let's go. 
Well, I've had about all the pussy I can take, to be honest with you. I can't say that, can I? That's for the outtakes, You've just right? said it. No, no it's staying in. Is it staying it's in? It's staying in, but as you can see, fellow leggers. <laughs> we've come to the end of Cats here at Gilworth House. <laughs> this and is it's, your it's, first outing. Well, I mean, I've seen the video version, you know, like the 1990s As in VHS, the pro kind of shotty pro one. Pro shot that slash they did a... part movie, part stage. John Partridge is in it. Yeah. It's beautiful, but that's all I've seen. That's my whole experience of Cats, other than knowing a lot of the songs, because they are quite standard. standard. They've been out there for a long I time. Mean, uh, like, like all the Lloyd Webbers. Memory and um, what's the, the one I really like? The songs go on and on. Mr. Mistopheles. Mr. Oh, Mistopheles well, goes on and bop. on. Skimbleshank's The Railway Cat is a great one as well. I love McCavity's in there as well. Good. The Jellicle Ball. Yeah. Iconic themes and songs. Yeah, and it's these nice. Is, are these meaning anything to you or do they just go... I mean, they happen. <laughs> okay, That's all what right you're then. saying. But I mean, I quite liked... I, I, I did miss the... You know the Jellicle Ball when it's Jellicle cats and it's just this for like half an hour yes, in the original choreography the arms. that's I the thing that. that's the <laughs> that, that. I, I was thinking that's the thing with redoing I'm something it. yeah you i'm go, still going oh, that's the thing with redoing something there's so iconic moments that you miss i because, think as i said it ran so long in the new london theater that there's yeah. just certain moves and certain things that as happen. i said in the opening that gillian lynn choreography became synonymous with the show it like did, if you thought it about cats you didn't just think about the music you thought about those moves absolutely but what i've got to say is that nick winston has managed to really demonstrate his understanding and his range here so much everything there is so much from in it. tap to ballet to more modern techniques it's all here and Nick is an absolute master at what he does like if I had to pick if I had my ideal show and I was going to piece together certain elements I would always want him for choreography I wouldn't want anyone else yes uh, and it is a choreographer's dream show and I imagine a nightmare show because there's so much in it it's danced throughout yeah it's like, sung, it it's is sang as a through and danced through what's that in my hand I imagine you want to you want to be really challenged there? So there's a lot of stuff going on, guys. It's in, it's it's the so much this in the, the show, this so is much the in the British choreography, summer. so much but in the air. Being like, it is tipping it down. Yeah, it's and tipping it, it down. The great thing about Kilworth House is it all is undercover. Yes, yeah, so, so the outdoors, show isn't going to stop. It's bringing the indoors outdoors, isn't it? Yeah. So even when it's raining, you know, you're safe. Yeah, you are absolutely okay, safe. Okay, so um, let's move that's on. That's kind of the, the general feel elements. of the show. Yeah. So now okay. I love the concept. Okay. The 1939 Blitz era was, do you know what, it was a simple kind of downtrodden time, but it came along with its own sort of glamour and mystery, and the air of that was perfectly sort of amplified by the setting, by the set, and by the costume. My God, was the costume not outstanding? It's In fact, as if Break a Leg as Award 2019 for set and costume by Philip Whitcomb. Wow, they go. was absolutely completely captivated by that era in this piece and it being set in that time it just i think his imagination there has and the way that cats may have been in that era dressing them in arp outfits and wartime outfits and all and also sort of 1940 housewife it was just inspired guys it's Absolutely almost like inspired. all the characters all, all the everything you would see at that time all those people were then the characters of the cats people say that they are that the pets are the same as their owners or the yeah. owners are the same as pets and it's almost like you could see where each cat came from yes from this cult of cats i loved that the cult <laughs> the Cult of Jellicle the Cats. Cult of Cats. Um, yeah, the design was great. Yeah. Uh, it's an outdoor venue, so there's not a lot you can do in terms of sex. There's no flies, there's no, you know, wing space. So you've got to be really instrumental, I think, and thought through what you can do to use the space. So yep. I agree with that nomination. Genius, absolutely genius. And it's the year that T.S. Eliot wrote them as well, 1939, right? Yeah, and can we just say T.S. Eliot's original poems are, they're f up guys they're an absolute like what is going on it is an absolute acid trip i mean surely this was an era where everyone was on opium or something because i haven't got a clue the lyrics are questionable at best but the music soars i'm not sure who was high, high, high who, <laughs> who was the higher? highest Who's yeah higher? whether it's t.s Eliot when writing it or was andrew lloyd webber in saying i can put music to this yeah. and let's make a musical i mean i'm not sure what, which one which mind has to be more distorted clearly don't like saying no to andrew Andrew Lloyd Webber because the only person that wanted Stephen Ward the musical was him and he made it happen and I feel like the same with Cats like he'd read it when 
clearly drunk or on something. But he also and, believed in it. And as he well. believed in it. And he went, I'm going to make this happen. And, you know, you've got to give him his dues. He did. He made it happen. And it stood the test of time. So, in that respect, I respect the guy. Respect him. Okay, what else do you want to talk about in terms of production? I want to talk about just expand I almost feel on like, the music. Okay, what are the, uh, in terms of a score, in terms of isolated okay, that's music. Where we are. Um, it's like, well, it's difficult to put it away because it's iconic. I've known it since I was a young man. It was the first show that I saw, so I know these songs inside out. The great s singing, it's a great showcase. It's a big ask of performers to be dancers and singers. I was knackered just watching them. It's, it's an exhausting show. It's it is. very demanding. So in terms of the score, I think the score is really good. It's really well orchestrated. It's a full band, yeah. full orchestra here as well. Each, I don't think you can commission it without having the full orchestra, which is great. Each number is a standalone number. Like there, it isn't thematic in the way that sort of things flow between numbers. You know some musicals you get those motifs Same that anthems. carry. And those they anthems. are very limited. They're just standalone numbers. Yeah, on the and whole they are. As a result, I think I heard things in Lloyd Webber's score that you know, like Love Never Dies is the same as. Um, you just hear the same thing from I, the same composer. As aspects sometimes. of Lovers, Beautiful Game. It's all the it same is a, motif. But anyway. But, it, but in this, I, I heard things that I haven't typically heard from Lloyd Webber, which well, was, which was nice because I find him a bit samey, guys. I mean, don't at me, but I okay. find him a bit samey. Okay, Let's what move else? on to the cast. The cast were great. The cast were great. Uh, is that young, as far as you want to go? Talented. Well, where would you go? I think the cast were outstanding. Okay, the cast I think were the cast outstanding. Were phenomenal. The cast were phenomenal. Yeah, yeah it's, you've got to be for this for this show. You can't be mediocre because it's asking of the best. You're throwing yourself around for two hours. And while you're throwing yourself around and on your head and your leg is up in the air, you're asking to sing these notes relentlessly and hold these notes. It's, it's a relentless score. I think what was surprising and a joy for me was the precision of the dancers. There's so many times I've seen ensemble numbers where somebody's been slightly out of time or somebody has just been a little bit not as sharp as the others. I would hate to work for Nick Winston because because he is clearly a director, a choreographer that drives his cast. He says, you want a Maserati? You want a Ferrari? You better work, bitch. And he makes them earn their bloody money and they aren't phoning this in, Which even is several weeks into the run. Okay, no, they're not phoning it in. They're giving them a role. However, I have found it more drilled in and more precise in past Nick Winston shows. Interesting. Um, I put that down to this being more um, about individuality of characters. Um, there are the times when I've seen stuff in the past like Guys and Dolls, there was not an arm or a hand or a leg out of place. I, I didn't, didn't get notice. that as much. Really? In this. I didn't yeah, notice. I didn't, for me. Maybe I was looking in the wrong places. They're, they're all moving. Maybe I was looking well. in the right places. They're all doing all the right moves, but just not as sharp. Sharp for me. Interesting. So, two different points of view. But I love the way those numbers, because they are standalone, they can sort of inherit a very specific genre and just stand alone in that. For example, the McCavity number for me was very evocative of all that jazz from Chicago with Velma Kelly and Roxy Hart. It was clearly an inspiration of these two women entertaining the troops almost. I'm not entirely sure which cast members sang that, so we can't really pull them out, but they I were can. great. Can I you? I can tell you. <laughs> yeah, I can tell you right now that I'm it impressed. was Sophie Campbell okay who we last saw in the marvelous wonderettes we did yes, yes she was great in that a real standout for me and the other actress that was in that part come on you said you can do it i'm now. gonna drum roll please you're gonna put a sound effect on yes you don't have to do it if i'm doing the drum oh <laughs> sorry i'm gonna go for i don't think my drum drum effect is this long <laughs> It's finished by now. No, I haven't got a clue. <laughs> I haven't got a clue, but they were great. It's really difficult to tell, but they were great. The whole company was great. Who else are we going to put now up? Now I'm going to find them. The other one was Jang... Oh, God. Oh, no. Let me start it, Was it better if you didn't find it? The other one was Jalenga Scott as Bomb Ballerina. We, I've got a feeling we've seen her in something. She looks... That name really sort of makes stands out to me but sh they were both great as this sort of sharp almost sometimes fussy s yep. choreography and brilliant chicago loved them um, yep. i would also pull out jenny any dots i don't know if we had an understudy on you know she doesn't look like that <gasps> Or maybe we did have an understudy. Could have been India Thornton, but whoever was playing her when we saw the production <laughs> on was this Sunday wet afternoon, if cast members, stunningly good. If that was a swing, man, she swing of the century. 
West End stalwart Jeremy Seacombe as Old Deuteronomy. Brilliant so, voice. The ARP warden. I also, I sort of want to call him Javert Cat. Javert times. Cat. Do you know what? Because he had those boogers <laughs> grips, as my nan used to call them. I don't think that's politically correct. No, but I had, really don't think it is. <laughs> but he had those, you know, the I've side never even birds, heard of that before. The Javert side uh, Yes, he did. But he, he had played, a fantastic voice. Yeah, um, he gave well. such a commanding performance, and I could believe that they were pandering to this character. You yes, know, they wanted absolutely. to impress him. Yeah. And I absolutely. loved his performance. Yep, also, else? Oliver Ormson, the wonderful Oliver good. Ormson, who got to show off his full range of skills, finally, as the spiv. He was kind of like the bad boy of the era, wasn't he? Like, might sell you a knock-off gold watch, and Ooh, he got this sort of... proper Cockney London accent. Yeah, Del Boy, you know what I'm saying. Um, I loved his characterisation, and to see him in character without let up he was just that character throughout which was great I think to that's watch. what's nice about this piece is you can maintain the character throughout mm. and you can own it yourself yeah. especially if you're recreating it yeah he was great um Grisabella Grisabella played Grisabella. by Emma Hatton the former glamour cat um I thought what was really good about her number is that she was washed up in so much it, there was a young Grisabella there was sort of like a glamour cat in waiting oh, interesting. who had to prompt her for her lines almost had to feed her her lines as if her memory was memory <laughs> was going are we talking about the little cat yeah little I cat. loved her I thought her voice was so pure um, like I could listen to all this. it's always that part that is the pure voice and then you get the main Grisabella come out and soar out the number but the little Grisabella the little cat who sang those lines was great and the big Grisabella was great as well it's yeah. just such an iconic song it's got to be Emma's on the a nail real belter isn't yeah. she she's absolutely you can see why she's played Alphabet in the West End because those notes are just she's so in control of what she gives and it's such an isolating part because you, you don't do much you're only on for moments on and off yeah. and that's it so I guess that's quite a rewarding part, maybe. I mean, I don't know. like I say, working for Nicky puts you through your paces. It'd be nice to have some time All off. All the stuff is good, like Munger Jerry and Rumple Teaser. The duet number was great as well. Although controversial, I'd like to know your thoughts because there's two different versions of that. There's the version that's out there now, but there's the original um, London soundtrack. I'm, I, I'm still a fan of the original original. Is this different then? Is this more of a rap? They I can't changed really it remember. a while. It was um, you have to listen to the soundtrack, but there's two very distinct. Do you mean versions. the cast recording? Let's yes. not get into the that. cast recording and then the version that's been out for a while. It's changed for a while. I like okay. the original. Just saying. However, performed really, really well. Um, lots of. Uh, again, a magical Mr. Mistopheles. I mean, he must have done about a hundred revolutions in that number in terms of turning, 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 spinning off, going over there and doing some more turns and then doing jumps and turns and then legs out and turns and turns and turns and turns. Like, great um, and so in control and very precise. Didn't, Any stand, other performances? didn't stand still though, did he? Doing all that, doing all that turning. Yeah. <laughs> um, no, I would just say the whole cast, what I really sort of appreciated here was the cast showing us literally their nine lives that they have lived through, the discipline they have learned through these dance How classes. many lives did they lose in this show? But no, because they, they, cause they, they give so much. It must have taken them so long to, the, to learn the level of discipline they have with this dancing. And this is a showcase piece. It's you a know, showcase for look, them, if absolutely. You're, if you're looking for a new agent and you want to show off what you can do, you invite them along to this, don't you? Because absolutely. bloody hell, are you put through your paces. I loved it. Okay, well, um, before we get on to how, how many stars, unless you want to talk about... Oh, the one thing I would talk about is lighting. Um, I feel a bit robbed in terms of lighting because we saw a matinee being outside we, we don't see anything. It's Everything lost. is lit. Yeah. I mean, we saw like, bits of light. So I'm, I'd almost recommend if you're coming to see an outdoor show, possibly Come night, coming to guys. the evening. Hmm. If you, unless you're not bothered. But I think we missed something in terms of the lighting. Yeah. Um, sound was good as yeah, well. Yeah, I mean, let's talk about the um, sound. Let's talk about Francis Goodhand on musical direction. Um, He's whipped them into shape. He has, and it must be sort of intimidating to get such an iconic, iconic score in front of you to think, I've got to do this justice, guys. But this band do, and the sound mix, I've got to say, was great here because on an outdoor space, you could potentially lose some of the lyrics or lose some of the sound. I didn't lose it. I thought it was... Didn't lose nothing. I thought it sounded great. Okay, now I think we're ready to oh, move ready on. Now. Okay, before we do, uh, make sure you hit um, subscribe, um, like, dislike, yeah. do one of them. Some people hate us. That's fine, too. Absolutely fine. Some people love this musical, and some people hate it, but I bet you're wondering what we thought. So for Cats, the musical, here at Kilworth House, 
ahead of the film. We never even oh, talked, about, we haven't the even film. talked about the film. There's a film anyway, coming out. Look up the trailer. Heard. I mean, eat it up, guys. It's a feast. But we are going to give... Oh. Four stars for this piece. Yeah, do you know what? It's a really strong interpretation. It's going to challenge you if you're just if you're a fan of that original iconic staging. But I think you're going to see it through a whole different set of eyes. The concept is strong. The design is amazing. Apart from the, the poster, the cast. Yeah, that, I mean the, the poster, poster is. Don't don't look at the poster and think it's Amdram. I'm that's really what sorry, it does guys, look but like. work needs to be done on the poster. Absolutely. Love Kim Wattel. Too late. It's, Love the work it's, you're doing. It's too late to fix that now. <laughs> but but like I say, to see this cast at the prime of their many of their careers, they aren't very diverse, which is a real shame. There's oh, no. Oh wow. Every cat yeah, is. Yeah, what happened there? Every cat is white, guys. Every cat is white. I mean, when you, you know... In a, terms of representation, oh, yeah. you're losing the points whole, here. The whole We've thing given about, the stars, so we can't put it back, but The that's... whole thing about look and not look is a black cat crossing your path. Well, there's no risk of that here, because there ain't no black cats, cr cats crossing your path in this show, yeah. because they are milky white, which is a real shame, really. Losing diversity points. Losing there. diversity points. But as an enjoyable evening, and um, do come at night, uh, out, I think it was great. Yes, um, showcase of talent, got no more, story whatsoever. I've got more respect for it now. Great songs, great performances, but hey, that's just what I think. Yeah, just what I think. What do you think? Let us know down below. We're the Breaker Leggers. And we'll catch you again soon. Bye. Bye.